follow the Sports Come on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Sports coma with Big Q and the guy. We talking about the Saints, man. We talking covering the Saints in this podcast 196. We covering the Saints in the first segment. We discussed the OTAs this time around. We're gonna talk about the NFL players' uh, uh, reaction to the national anthem policy. Of course, we're gonna chime in what our thoughts on the situation and break it down. Now, DC, looking at this, man. A lot of uh, people upset about it, but according to the anth- the anthem policy, you know the national anthem policy, uh, it stipulates now that teams could be fined. You know, uh, teams could actually be fined. You know, and you know for not but just not standing up uh, during it, and you know it could be considered not fine. Well, let me read some of it uh, from the article from me and ESPN that did a pretty decent job with this thing. NFL owners have unanimously approved the national anthem policy that requires players to stand if they're on the field during the performance, but gives them the option to remain in the locker room if they prefer. Okay. The policy subjects teams to a fine. If a player or any other team personnel do not show respect for the anthem, that includes any attempt to sit or kneel as dozens of players has done before the past seasons to protest racial inequality and police brutality. Those teams also will have the option to find any team personnel, including players, for the infraction. Now, this is what Roger Goodell said in one of his quotes. Quote, we want to be respectful of the national anthem. We want people to stand. That's all personnel and make sure they treat this moment in a respectful fashion. That's something we think we owe. We were also very sensitive to give players choices, end quote. Now, that's Roger Goodell spoken about. Of course, they had a few they had a few other owners that didn't particularly wanted to vote on this. Uh, You know, he had San Francisco 49ers owner Jed York. He abstained from the vote. Uh, You know, that part of the process, he didn't want didn't want to even much get involved in. Now, of course, they had some other guys. Uh, that chimed in on it, Tyrod Taylor and the rest of those guys did have some bones to pick about it. Uh, Drew Brees drew in his comments. Drew said, I've made myself very clear. I will be standing up with my hand over my heart, showing respect to the United States of America and the flag and everything it stands for. I would expect that everybody's going to be out there with their hand over their heart, showing respect to the flag and to the country. Now, Drew's made no qualms about it. He's always felt that way from day one. And Tyrod well, Taylor. Was in the military, and uh, he's got a lot of family members in the military. I believe that were in the military. Right. Listen, Tyrod Taylor. Now, Tyrod Taylor is a black quarterback in the NFL. He he's playing for the Cleveland Browns right now. This is what he said. You know, to make a decision that strong, you will hope that players have input on it, but obviously not. So we have to deal with it as players, for good or bad. Uh, for a good or a bad thing, at the end of the day, they call the shots, make the rules. So that's what we have to abide by. So I think that the main thing out of all of this is that each ball club is having open communications with players, ownership about issues that are going on in the community and trying to change it. That's a part of Tyrod Taylor's quote. DC, you familiar with this uh, topic? What do you think about the rule uh, for the national anthem, the policy, the national anthem, new policy voted unanimously by the NFL. It's, uh, it's a double-edged, uh, what, what, what are you, not a double-edged sword, but they, they're trying to finagle their way out of it on both sides and act as if they're neutral. But they're exposing their hand and showing where their loyalty lies. And it, for the NFL, it's always going to be a money play because uh, then the military is tied into them making finance. So a lot of the players, um, of course, feel a certain way. So to try and appease the players, they're going to say you don't have to be out there for the national anthem. But when you think about it, it's kind of like contradictory to their actual point in making a state.
Okay, DC is still with me. Are you still with me there, buddy? All right, seemed like we lost DC. Um, we're gonna try to get him back as he was quoting talking about the NFL, the NFL um, anthem policy, and that just seems like something that a lot of people have that absolutely kind of <clears throat> actually kind of kind of a mixed reaction, a mixed bag. Some people think it's a good idea. Some people think it's not so good of an idea. Me myself, personally, personally, they did give them an option. Uh, to not come on the field. And I think a lot of guys will execute that, you know, that that will continue to take their stance. But at the end of the day, my, my my thing is, you know, I think that if, you know, if your beliefs are that strong and you don't think that you're having, uh, um, you know, the ability in the league to express your views, then I think the best thing that you could do as a player, you know, as a person, period, is that they have a lot of money. And if you don't like the the uh the rules or the regulations of how it goes you know i would think that if they don't respect their mind maybe you should start your own league you know what i'm saying that's that's my whole thing if they if you not if if at the end of the day and you don't you know if you feel like you know this type of stuff is happening and you know they can't seem to get it right then that's an option that most players are gonna have to start thinking about they're gonna have to obviously think start thinking about hey you know what Maybe we should. We have enough money. We're multimillionaires here. Why not start our own thing? Hey, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes you have to step away. If you feel like if it if if it's that big an issue, then perhaps not playing and starting your own stuff where you can be able to express how you feel and do what you want to do. Because at the end of the day, like Tyrod Taylor said, it's they're in a certain position. And then you have guys like Eric Reed. You got guys like Calvin Kaepernick that are better than some of these guys that's on these teams. But these guys can't seem to find a, a, a way to get a job nowadays. And, of course, Kaepernick was a guy that a lot of people said that he could have had a backup job with the Seattle Seahawks, with the Seattle Seahawks recently. But they, in an the interview, said, are you going to keep trying to protest? When Kyle and Kaepernick said, yes, I'm going to keep protesting. And, of course, they elected not to sign him because they don't want to quote uh, uh, Slack or the – uh, negative reaction that he's going to get for standing up for his rights and disrespecting the flag, end quote. You know, it's not disrespecting the flag, man. You know what I'm saying? I just, I, I don't, I try to beat that in people's heads when somebody's standing up for, or for their beliefs or they feel a certain way. Not everybody's going to feel the same way about the flag. People have to understand that you can't force people uh, to, 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 to other things that they don't, they themselves don't believe in. That's not America. You know, at the end of the day, learn what the real reason why the man is doing what he's doing. And of course he took his advice from a Navy SEAL to do what he's doing. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's something we have to take in a flag, but this, this flag situation is going to continue to go on for a while. I, I think so. It's a hot button issue. And a lot of people seem to not understand uh, what's really going on here. So uh, outside of that, uh, let's keep it moving, man. We're going to focus on trying to get uh, DC reconnected here and see if we can get him back here because he done dropped out on us because we want to talk about the, the, some of his bubble guys uh, that he uh, was speaking about that he wanted to uh, talk about. And of course, if you heard the last sports coma show, you know, I had put together a list of people that I believe that wasn't going to be on the Saints roster, you know, and one of those guys were guys like uh, uh, Kakaha, <laughs> And we, we're trying to reach DC now, people. So y'all just bear with us. But there you go, uh-huh. DC. Yeah, there you go. He back. We got him back. Uh, thank y'all guys uh, for hook, hooking him back up, DC, back in there. Uh, go ahead and finish your thoughts on that uh, national anthem. Uh, when, when did it drop out, man? I, I felt like I had a microphone in front of a stadium full of 60,000 people. And I was pouring my heart out. Well, the phone just dropped. Right. Well, <laughs> so I mean, whatever happened. Well, you, you toward the back end, finish your commentary on the back end, and then we'll just move on to tie. To your bubble guys. Well, basically, uh, the point I was making is uh, I think we're living in a world now, and the NFL shows that where it's all about profit, and they're not concerned with the actual truth. Uh, nobody really cares about how, the, how what the players think and how the players feel, and the communities that come from they come from have been affected. So basically, suck it up, play football, 
well, show respect to your company. Show respect to your country, uh, the hell with your protest, whatever it means, and just stay in the locker room if you have a problem with that. So it's, it's uh, really a smug way of trying to play both sides of the fence and act like you really care on one side, but you don't. It's obviously you care about the other side, and in a way, kind of rightfully so, in a way, because it's, it's monetary based, and you know the military and NFL are in bed together. Business-wise, uh, a lot of money, like I was saying, planes fly over, rocket fuel and cheap, servicemen are out there at every game, flags all over. So um, it's really nothing to feel good about. I like the fact that unlike the NBA, that the players aren't forced to go out there if they don't want to. I guess that's the one positive you can take away from it. But it may start a whole other protest. Might, it could possibly start a whole nother league if guys get uh, astute enough to say, you know what, we're not going to play. We're going we're gonna to play in a league in which we can be able to do what we want to do. So this might be the thrones of what some players might come together and business people come together and put together a league that will rival the NFL. This type of stuff usually is the is small ignition spark that gets stuff like that going. But let's move away from that topic, DC. Let's jump right into your bubble, guys. And, of course, you know, we talked about on the previous show uh, you know, I named my bubble guys. I named a few of my guys. Uh, I got we got a I got a lot of love from that podcast. Not too many people disagree with me to your chagrin, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> let's <laughs> let's I see, disagree. <laughs> let's see what you see. What happened when I step away from the show, man? You get out of control. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. Let's let's hear who DC's bubble guys is. DC, who are your bubble guys? Not to make the team. Don't give no they milk toast. And don't, and don't give no milk toast, guys. Give us some really good ones. Oh, man. no. You know, I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna throw one that you're definitely probably already thinking about. I hate to say it because I actually like the guy, hometown dude. Uh, ultimately, a lot of people might not know who he is. But okay. I got to be real. He is a bubble guy. Okay. Um, could possibly make the team. Maybe he's out of here. Uh, cornerback, uh, actually from the city. Very short cornerback. He showed some promise on special teams, but hey, you see what we just drafted, so he's definitely on the bubble. My second bubble guy, getting a little bit away from the milk toast and getting into uh, more of the laxatives, I guess. I don't, you, I don't know how you want to put that. What is your milk toast from anyway? But anyway, my second bubble guy is going to be Tommy Lee Lewis, man. Uh, Brian Scott clearly was drafted to take over the return and punt duty. Um, we've upped our ante at wide receiver. Right now, we have at least four guys that you know, um, they pretty much spots are pretty much solidified. So um, you got Brandon Coleman, you have Ted Ginn, you got Cameron Meredith, you got Michael Thomas. That leaves basically one spot left. The Saints usually only run five receivers uh, because we have a six receiver and our running back. So um, you're only going to have five receivers active. So you got Trevin Durrell, Austin Carr, um, you know, Got to be missing somebody. Uh, Michael Huff. Um, you got you got all these guys. And then you got Tommy Lee Lewis there. His biggest attribute is special teams. So Tommy Lee Lewis is definitely on the bubble. Um, and moving on to the most prominent one that everybody's probably going to say, I'm crazy, would be Josh Hill. Josh Hill is on the goddamn bubble, y'all. Dude gave us 126 yards here in touchdown last year. We're paying him a million and a half dollars. Uh, he's a decent, okay blocker. Um, some people would say he should be our starting tight end. Some people say I might not know what the hell I'm talking about. But uh, when I've been looking at uh, Yelder and what we have in Shereen and also what we have in Ben Watson, and then to be honest, uh, if I got to pick between Hamanui and Josh Hill, I might say Hamanui. He's a lot better blocker. Don't keep about the same thing with each. I mean, Josh Hill and he was 126 years old and touchdown. You don't think I'm going to know he can do that? I know so, I can. I, mean, I know um, a man can do that. <laughs> right. So I, I would rather keep this man than Josh Hill. And for me, I think that's what makes him a bubble guy and by the fact that Yelder, Yelder to me, is a guy that could sneak on his team, depending on how he does in training camp. When I say on the team, I mean in the active roster. For me, Josh Hill, uh, Tommy Lee Lewis, Arthur Millet. And what the hell is wrong with you with that Craig Robinson? <laughs> there you are, too. Craig Robinson. Well, 
Now listen, we gonna talk. We gonna talk about. We 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 gonna we gonna talk about it on the side of the break. We about to hit our break, but when we come back on the other side of the break, we'll get more into it. We we'll also will cover Saints defensive improvements. Can the Saints be a top ten? DC says a top five. Can they be a top ten, a top five defense in the upcoming season? We'll talk about that in LSU and other topics on the other side of the break. Listen to Sports Corner. Thank you and the guys. Stay with us. 